Hey, Ben here. In today's video, we'll answer the question, can I discuss what psychological egoism is and are people only motivated by self-interest even in the case of seemingly altruistic acts? So as usual, I'll go over the definition and explain what psychological egoism is. Then I'll discuss if the philosophy is rational or not and include what some of the major objections against it are. Now, after watching this video, you thought it was helpful at any point, please consider liking it and sharing it with others as this helps my channel get seen in the algorithm better. And feel free to subscribe for more videos like it using the link in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when new videos are out. So psychological egoism is a theory of egoism, egoism being a philosophy concerned with the self's role or ego as the motivation and goal for one's own action. Specifically, psychological egoism believes that people are always motivated by self-interest, even in what seems to be acts of altruism. This is a descriptive philosophy, meaning that it only claims how things are not how they ought to be as opposed to a normative philosophy, which is about how things should be. Now, the formation of the philosophy is credited to Thomas Hobbes and Jeremy Bentham. Hobbes writes in his famous book, Leviathan, no man giveth but with intention of good to himself because gift is voluntary and all of voluntary acts, the object is to every man his own good of which if men see they shall be frustrated, there will be no beginning of benevolence or trust nor consequently of mutual help. And Bentham wrote in his introduction to the principles of morals and legislation, nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. It is for them alone to point out what we ought to do, as well as to determine what we shall do. On one hand, the standard of right and wrong. On the other, the chain of causes and effects here fastened to their throne. And here Bentham argues for a type of psychological egoism called psychological hedonism, which restricts the kind of self-interest we can ultimately desire to pleasure or the avoidance of pain. Now suppose psychological egoism is a true description of reality. In that case, every act we take in life is out of selfishness and self-interest, no matter how charitable the act seems to be. Every act that seems selfless is really done for reasons like the expectation of reciprocation, desire to gain respect, the desire for reward, or some other satisfaction like feeling like a good person. Psychological egoism is contrasted with psychological altruism, which says that some uh, acts that we can have are ultimately for altruistic motives. For example, someone may argue that volunteering to work for an animal rescue shelter without pay, uh, the without the ability to adopt an animal or any sort of recognition, is a pretty selfless act. But the psychological egoist will claim that this is actually a selfish act because it's fulfilling a desire to feel good from acting altruistically. Psychological egoists aren't narcissists who only care about themselves. It includes people who may dedicate their lives for what seems to be purely altruistic acts. Now, Hobbes and Bentham don't offer a ton of proof for psychological egoism, and there are little in the way of scientific studies fully confirming this. Uh, however, some people buy into the concept because it offers a simplistic and seemingly logical explanation for something complicated, human behavior. Einstein spoke about how the best theories and descriptions of reality should offer a clear explanation while being as simple as possible. So does it exist? What are the arguments against it? One of the most famous arguments against psychological egoism comes from Bishop Joseph Butler, stating that psychological egoism is false because one must desire things other than one's own welfare in order to get welfare. Basically, the experience of pleasure we get upon attaining something presupposes a desire for the thing attained not for the pleasure itself. The pleasure we get from eating ice cream is often a byproduct of a prior desire for the thing that gave us pleasure. And Butler's argument can be simplified into the following steps. Number one, sometimes people benefit from helping others. Number two, sometimes such benefit presupposes a desire for what, it gener for what generated it, not for the resulting benefit. Number three, so sometimes people desire things other than self-interest. Therefore, psychological egoism is false. Also, the philosopher David Hume argued that people have certain innate non-egoist instincts, like the instinct of a mother to protect and care for a child. Hume wrote, What interest can a fond mother have in view who loses her health by assiduous attendance on her sick child and afterwards languishes and dies of grief when freed by its death from the slavery of that attendance? It seems incoherent to describe such a mother's goal as self-interested, especially when she dies in grief. Another argument comes from philosopher Derek Parfit, who wrote about how psychological egoism suffers from the fallacy of equivocation in his book On What Matters. Equivocation, calling two things by the same name, is an informal fallacy resulting from the use of a particular word or expression 
in multiple senses within an argument. In this case, the word want is being used illogically. So psychological egoists state, whenever people act voluntarily, they are doing what they want to do. Doing what we want is selfish, so everyone acts selfishly. Parfit writes that psychological egoism fails because it uses the word want first in the wide sense and then later in a narrow sense, wider sense meaning any state of being motivated, while a narrow sense refers to desires like wanting pleasure. If you gave up your time to help homeless animals, your act would not be selfish, though you would be doing what you want in the wide sense. And perhaps the best argument against it is that the theory is based in circular logic, a position put forth by William Hackslick and Thomas Macaulay. Take the statement, if a person willingly performs an act, that means he derives personal enjoyment from it. Therefore, people only perform acts that give them personal enjoyment. The conclusion of this statement is the same as its hypothesis, making it a fallacy. If you willingly volunteered in an animal clinic, that means you got pleasure from it, according to egoism. Therefore, you only volunteered animal clinics to get enjoyment from it. Overall, I think psychological egoism is a poor and frankly a logical way of describing human behavior. But what do you think? Well, let me know in the comments below and let me know any uh, questions you want answered. And if you thought this video was helpful at any point, again, please consider, uh, consider liking it and sharing it with others as this helps my channel get seen in the uh, YouTube algorithm. And feel free to subscribe for more videos like it using the link in the description and turn on the notification bell to receive updates when new videos are out. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again.